I spent 10 years in prison. I've been out a few years and the most common question is, why did you go to prison and why the hell so long? And when I tell people burglary, they're like, burglary, ma'am? Like, who did you rob? The president of the United States of America? I was a cat burglar, okay? I'm not trying to laugh, I'm not, it's not funny. It's not, it's not funny, y'all. But the thing is, it is kind of funny because like me, but let's just get to the story, okay? So I started to kind of have a little mental checklist. There was things that I had on me and things that I would look for in the home that I was going to burglarize. So I'm gonna tell you guys now, okay, what it was that I used to do in order to secure that whatever the house that I was gonna break into was actually a good location, how I scoped it out, and my you know, infamous checklist. So the first thing I would do is check the weather, okay? Sometimes I had checked the weather, especially if I was like, you know, in a moment where I really needed to come up quick, I would check the weather for a couple days ahead of time to really get a day that I knew was gonna be a good day to hit, okay? So if it's bright, beautiful, sunny, I really try to find places that are more isolated, more desolate, where the houses are further apart, because people are outside, they're gardening, they're walking their dogs, they're pushing their babies in strollers, they're exercising, working on the house, they're retired, you know, whatever. Like, they're looking out windows, and they're just paying attention a lot more. But if it's raining, drizzling, just sprinkling even a little bit, if it's foggy, if it's wet, if it's nasty, that's it. That's the best of the best. You know why? Because in that type of weather condition, people are not only not outside, but they also aren't going to chase you. They're not going to come outside just to be nosy because they think something looks weird and get all wet. It's disgusting outside. They're staying in their house. They're not glaring or peeping or even just dazing out the window for a casual afternoon delight because it's gross. There's nothing to look at. And if they do happen to see you, they're not going to even be sure of what they saw or what the car or the make or whatever because you know why? There's raindrops all over the window. It's not like they have wipers, so they can't really see it. That was a really, really, really big deal, the weather. The weather was huge, and the nastier it was, the better off I was. And also, I knew that law enforcement doesn't chase you in weather you know, conditions that are really bad because it's dangerous. So, I'm out of there, baby. It's raining and I'm all in. The second thing was the time of day. The reason I was waking up at 5, 5.30 to start getting things in order is because most people go to work between 7 and 4. Kids usually start getting out of school around 3. People come home, you know, for lunch sometimes around 12. But what I know is that the majority of people, unless you're a stay-at-home mom, they will be gone out of the house by 8 o'clock. They may come back by 11.30. So between 8 and 11, prime time, take a little break from about 11.30, maybe even 12, to about 1.30. 1.30 to 3, second round. Those times right there, pretty, pretty accurate, pretty sure no one's going to be around. And those were the times that I would target. One of the things I would require is that the home have a security system. Um, some kind of alarm system. There could be a little stick out front that said ADT. I needed there to be a home security system because I felt like people that have alarms will likely have something that they want to protect. Around 2006-ish, in Florida, they started a new thing where if your alarm went off, they used to just automatically dispatch police to your home to check it out if nobody answered the phone. So if you call the home and nobody answers, they would just dispatch police out there and they would go ahead and check the premises. But then what started happening was police were wasting a lot of time and energy and just aimlessly driving around because there were so many false alarms going off. They were at work, so nobody was home to answer the phone. The cops were coming out there and what they would do is they would leave after three times, they would leave a little um, notice on the door saying, hey, the alarm went off, nothing seemed to be, you know, looking out of place or looking like it was tampered with on your property, so we were here at this time, please, you know, note that you had a false alarm. They'd put a sticker on the door, that was your notice. Once you got three of those, it was like a $50 fine, and then once you got five, it was like a $100 fine, stuff like that. So, basically... After that didn't really work and people were still having an outrageous amount of false alarms. I don't know if it's a law or if it's just like something that they do in Florida. I, I don't know, but it's a thing. Like it's, it is a rule in place. This is what happens. In Florida around 2006-ish, if your alarm went off in your home, no matter what the situation is, 
they have to make contact with the homeowners. So they're gonna call your house, they're gonna call your cell phone, they're gonna call your work and all that stuff. Until you physically tell them, hey, no, I'm not there, I don't know what's going on, or I can look at the camera, or yeah, please send somebody, or don't worry about it, don't send anybody, it's probably my dog. It doesn't matter what the outcome is, but if they don't make contact with you, nobody's coming out there. Now, if they make contact with you, you're at work and you're worried, they'll send somebody out there on your behalf. But until the alarm company makes contact with you, the police are not coming out there. And I knew that, I knew that, okay? So, basically, what happened is, I knew that once the alarm went off, it would go beep for about 30 to 45 seconds, it's pretty standard, and then it would start going off, woo, 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 woo. And once it did that, I knew that now they have to call the homeowner. Now the homeowner has to either confirm or deny that they're there, and if they're not there, they're probably gonna wanna send the police, at which point now the alarm company has to call the police dispatch and get somebody out there, and it's probably gonna take them another five to seven minutes. So I, baby, I got at least, <laughs> I got at least a good 10 to 15 minutes, okay? And that for me was all I needed. So now what I needed to ensure was that there was a window somewhere low enough where I could use tools that I had because I did go out and buy special glass cutting tools, a little hammer, special gloves, a little thing that sucks glass once you cut the whole, you know, cut the shape, whatever your shape is, mine was circle. Once I had all of those tools, I would have to make sure that there was a window somewhere that was low enough to where I could walk, kind of, you know, step over into without getting hurt and then be able to get back out. Next thing on the checklist was that I absolutely needed to see some evidence of there being an animal in the home. Wealthy people, um, people that take pride in their homes and their lives and their pets, you know, usually have a sign on the door that says, in case of fire, please rescue my cat, please rescue my dog. That way if something happens and they're not home, the firefighters know that there's animals inside and please rescue them, right? So. I knew that if that was there in, on the door and there was an animal inside, that most likely the animal was walking around freely. In my experience as a cat burglar, I can tell you that most people that have money and nice homes and nice things in their homes do not keep their animals locked up. Now, the reason that it was important to have an animal walking around is because then I knew that the motion sensors for the alarm system were likely off. I always wore shoes that were either one size too small or one size too big in case I ever left a footprint. I also made sure to always have my hair very neatly tied back down, tied back or down. Um, I also made sure to always look very professional. And the key thing was I always wore scrubs. I tried to find houses that either had a back gate that was pretty high, not like a chain link fence, but something that could hide me, had a door that I could open or some way I could climb it. And I prefer that the back gates or fences back up to like a main road or at least that I'm in a cul-de-sac, something like that. I wanna make sure there's a way I can get in and out easily, and I don't wanna be trapped in the neighborhood. But just to be completely honest, I couldn't always find houses that met that criteria. So if I could just find homes that had a lot of decorative landscaping, bushes, shrubbery, things like that, that could conceal me as well. I was trying to get the big, big head honchos, okay? The real, real upper, upper, upper class. The people that, I just felt like, and I know this wasn't right, but I justified in my messed up mind at that moment, they could replace what they were, what, what I was taking. They weren't really in need of it. They had a lot of money. They had homeowner's insurance. And I tried to also kind of steer clear of things that looked like heirlooms, but let's be real. I was a thief. So it's not like, I wasn't doing anyone any favors, okay? I was still breaking into people's shit and it wasn't right. But I'm just letting you guys know that this checklist is what insured that the house was profitable. Disclaimer, I'm not glorifying this. I don't agree with this. I absolutely positively would be ready to rip somebody's head off now if this happened to me. And I absolutely feel an insane amount of remorse and regret for everything I did and everybody I did it to, okay? So let's just get that out of the way. Cause I don't, I, it's still gonna happen, but I don't need anyone coming in here talking about, oh, you think it's so great, whatever. No, I don't. I wasn't in my right state of mind. We'll get into that another day, but I needed to put that disclaimer in here because I don't think it's right, but I'm just telling you guys what my life was like because maybe it'll help somebody, and I don't know. I don't know if it will, but, but you don't know until you try. But yeah, guys, that wraps up my cat burglar checklist. There it is. Love you guys. Hope it helps somebody. Love y'all.
See you later.